Welcome and welcome back everybody, AT here. And in today's video, we'll be doing a solo playthrough of Fishing Lessons, an 18 card wallet game from Designer Scott Alms. During the course of the playthrough, I'll give a tutorial about how the game is played and be sure you stick around for the end of the video where I share my thoughts about the game in general. A huge shout out to Button Chai Games for sending me a copy not necessarily for review, just because they're awesome people. And <laughs> here we are anyway. But without further ado, let's get started. So here we have a game of fishing lessons set up and ready to play. Over the course of the game, we'll be playing as one of the family members of our dearly departed Leland, who shared both his passion and knowledge of fishing with the entire family. Today we'll be playing as Chiho, Leland's son-in-law, going out on a solo fishing adventure to reflect on the good times we had with Leland and the lessons he imparted upon us. Our goal is to catch a specific combination of fish that is unique to our character before our lessons run out. So for setup, we're going to start by shuffling up the seven light cards. If you're playing with the Fabled Fish expansion like we are today, you'll add a random eighth Fabled Fish card to that and lay them out in a line to form our lake. We're then going to shuffle up our lesson cards. If you're playing using the Family Friends expansion, you'll add the bonus two lesson cards and remove two before putting them face down to form our lesson deck. We'll then draw three cards to open our starting hand and place our character above one of the center two cards. So on your turn, you're going to select one of the three lessons and insert them into the lesson row. It can be played before, after, or in between previously played lessons. You can also choose to substitute in a lesson and replace a former lesson by discarding it. Then you're going to play all the lessons from left to right in order, starting with the top action followed by the bottom. These will allow us to flip over cards to search for the fish we need or to move along the lake. Today we'll be playing the hard mode of the game. So by the end of the game, where when we've drawn our last lesson card and played the final round, we need to have exactly three tilapia and two catfish. Otherwise we've lost the game. In a normal game, you would check after each round, but we're gonna see how we fare today with a challenge. So we are ready to get started. The first thing we want to do is probably get some information. So I think we want to go ahead and play um, our card here, which lets us flip two directly underneath and either to the right or left. I think we want to possibly flip these two cards here and we'll see what we get. So we have two tilapia and a catfish, which is a good start. And then we have to move one or three spaces exactly. Um, if we move down here, we would be able to flip some other things if we move over here. Hmm, one, two, three. I think we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Alrighty. And now we're ready for the next turn. So we're going to draw the next card and we can flip three, move two or three. If we do this, we can flip these two and then move. Maybe we want more flexibility with flipping a single card here or maybe we want to see what these cards are. So we're gonna book it to the other end after we flip. We'll flip these two here, like so. Okay, we have catfish, catfish, tilapia, catfish, and tilapia. Okay, gotta remember that. <laughs> then we can move one, two, or three. Let's move one, two, three. And then we can move one, two, or three and flip over this sequence of cards. We're gonna move a full three. Whoa, Jiho is booking it. All right, <laughs> the catfish here, um, nothing there that's of use to us. And ooh, a fabled fish. So this is the paddle fish. When revealed, move your boat one space away from this card. Okay, so we're gonna move all the way to the opposite end and draw our next card. Good to know. Okay, so it would be helpful to be able to flip this specific card to know what it is. Although we can just pick out a combination of cards that we want for the end of the game now, since we have a lot of information. So we do have two tilapia, which means the third tilapia is probably right here. So we definitely need these three cards. And then we need one additional catfish. So one, two, three, or four by the end of the game. So let's see if we can make that happen. Um, That's pretty tricky. <laughs> Okay, we need to just kind of keep this as minimal as possible. So what I think we'll go ahead and do first is we'll place this card here, since these are very similar, and put this card off to the side as a discarded lesson. We're then going to flip all three of these. We'll move two, um, and then we will flip these. Uh, yeah, then we'll move one and flip. 
So if we ever get to a point where, oh, these cards are here, but if we were here, for example, and there's a card to the right, we just wouldn't do it. So we're here and we'll flip these back over. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is how actual fishing works. I've only been fishing once and um, I was so upset <laughs> when I caught the tiniest little fish that I started crying and begging for them to throw it back because I felt too bad about <laughs> it being in pain. So that's my uh, whole fishing expertise there. <laughs> All right, so here we can flip these three, which will be good because we do need this tilapia. And then we'll have too many carps. So we're gonna have to flip some of them back down unless this doesn't have a carp on it, but then we have some down here. So we'll have to book it all the way to the other end. Maybe we'll go ahead and take this one and replace this. This is too many cards to figure out for our pattern. So I'm gonna set that over there. We're gonna start by flipping these three. All right. And we're going to move two or three. So we'll, if we move one, two, three, then we could move one and flip this catfish over, which I think is good. One, two, three, move one more, flip the card to the left, which is the catfish. And we're good there. So now we have three tilapia and two catfish. But again, for the hard mode, we would need to have this exact combination of cards by the end of the game. So we're going to continue on. We just have to maintain this kind of balance. I probably want to get rid of this card because it's too crazy in terms of what we're trying to do. So I'm going to discard that for this one. And we'll go ahead and flip the card directly underneath. All right. And then Jiho is going to swap two face down cards. So maybe let's just swap. I didn't like this paddlefish here. Maybe we'll swap it here so that we don't have to deal with it. So we can move one or two and flip a card. We'll move one here and flip this back face up. But we have still our winning combination. And this is our last lesson card. So if we can maintain this, we'll be good to go. If we flip this card over, we can move and flip him back. But we have these instead. So if we flip these two, I could move to flip this one back and then move to flip this one. So I think that will actually work, I hope. So we're gonna flip these two cards like so. Then we're going to move one to flip this card. We'll swap two face down cards here and here, and then we'll move two, one or two, and flip the card underneath. So if we move one and flip this, we'll have three tilapia and two catfish, which means that we are at the end of our game since our lesson pile is out, and we have had a successful day out on the lake. So there you have it. That is a solo playthrough of fishing lessons. I'm really glad that Bunshai sent me a copy of this game because I'll be honest, the theme didn't really draw me in. The idea of fishing is just not something that is <laughs> that is really exciting to me. As you all saw during the playthrough, my only experience fishing was quite dramatic, so it was one that I had initially avoided when I first heard about it. So jumping right into my thoughts about the game, while I'm not an expert in fishing, I do know that it does require a lot of mindfulness, a lot of planning, a lot of restraint. And I think the mechanics do a great job of emulating that. Yes, technically when you're fishing, you're not gonna be going back and forth trying to actively catch the fish, but I like the idea that you can put out a sequence of lessons that you have to really think ahead about how that's gonna impact your presence in the water. And the idea that you can replace certain lessons and show restraint in not doing too many moves, sometimes less is more. And so far as I know, I think that goes pretty well with the theme. I also think it's just a really great game design to be able to have those different options. It just opens it up a lot more and makes some really interesting decisions and resolutions of tension throughout the game. Now there is one glaring thing I do have to say about the gameplay. And that is the luck with how your lake cards come out. My first playthrough, I lost terribly. I have a very bad memory. My next playthrough, I won just barely, and it was a super satisfying game arc. The next four times I played, I won on round two, playing at normal difficulty. Now, I would not chalk this up to me just learning the game that well. I think there are some strategies that I developed, but just how the cards came out and winning right away, pretty unsatisfying, but I thought, hey, it's a quick game. I can just set it up and go again. What are the chances that it'll happen a second time? Well, after one night of having that happen three times in a row, I thought, hmm, I guess I'm just going to play on hard mode from now on. 
So I think in terms of scaling and difficulty, there might be some adjusting that can be done. It would have been interesting to see how quickly you can catch the fish or having to have a target round versus just playing through all the cards. I think that would give the game a little bit more replayability and variability. So while I do enjoy the mechanics, I found the win conditions and the challenge of how you got there to not always be as satisfying depending on how your cards come out at the very beginning of the game. One of the things though that I do really appreciate about the game is the care that was put into designing it. The artwork is great. I love the diversity of characters and I have to say that the overall theme really kind of caught me off guard. It's very sentimental, very nostalgic, and in terms of putting together like a commemorative piece to remember a beloved family member, incorporating the lessons in, the little anecdotal stories, after playing through a couple different characters, you really feel like you get a sense of who Leland was, and it feels like he could be a real person. This is my favorite type of storytelling in game design, where you aren't just told a story, where the story is revealed to you throughout a series of experiences that you have alongside the characters, alongside the game. And I think that part of it, put along with some interesting mechanics, really makes for overall a really enjoyable experience. While it might not be the most challenging game, I think that this is still a really special piece. So I think that being said, it's really up to you to decide whether this game would be for you or not. For me, like I said, surprisingly, I ended up loving this game a lot more than I thought for those reasons, as more of an experience versus just for the mechanics and the gameplay, because I think it really delivers something bigger than just a little puzzle or a game. And that's all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like and subscribe down below for more board game content. Thank you so much for joining me as always, and I will see you next time. Bye. And I will have gotten to fulfill two dreams in one. My first time having a successful fishing trip and living out my dreams as the ninth member of ATs as a K-pop idol.